share it. Yo, yo, yo. Just picked up this beauty. It may not look like a beauty, but I guarantee you once it's stabilized, it is a freaking beauty. It's a beauty because it makes a ton of money, right? And I'm gonna tell you why i rather mobile home parks over apartment complexes and other investments like single family homes, short term vacation rentals, all that stuff. Let's let a few people hop on. Who we got right here? Oh, who's that? Huh? Big Mama? Got my Mardi Gras. Girl. Got, got the Mardi Gras? She's rocking the Mardi Gras? What's up, Tim? What's up, Rhett? What's up, Brian? Steven? Sharon and Bite, if you're just jumping on. So, how to find, fun, and rehab a mobile home park, right? What's up, Alexander? First of all, how to find it. Um, first of all, I'm going to tell you guys, she's the one that found it. However, let me tell you how and why she found it right so there's a big thing called branding right you got to brand yourself in your market what's up nick what's up mitch what's up eric you got to really brand yourself we didn't we didn't even pay anything for this this deal like this this came from pretty much branding ourselves in our market right so what you want to do is if you're just coming on please hit the like button share invite um you know we tell everybody in our area hey we're buying mobile home parks hey we're buying like obnoxiously right so my wife, I tell my wife, hey, listen, we just finished rehabbing the last park. Let's find another park. So what does she do? She goes all over social media, right? And she tells all her friends, hey, looking to buy mobile home parks. And what they do is they share that. And then a friend of a friend contacts Patty and says, hey, um, well, girl we went to it was a girl we went, actually it was a girl we went to school with that was a lot older than Patty, yep. a lot older than Patty. And she saw that she, she knew Patty. She's like, you know, my dad's selling a mobile home park, right? My dad's selling a mobile home park. So then, Pat, what does Patty do? Patty calls me, and I go, you know, I start the negotiations, right? So that's that's pretty much how we found this deal. It really wasn't, a, um, you know, a matter of doing a specific piece of direct mail, you know, uh, Facebook ad or whatever, maybe cold calling. It was literally just, you organically. know, organically posting that, hey, I'm looking for a mobile home park. And you, as an investor, if you're in the market and you're trying to be an investor. You have to be constantly in the know, like on social media, telling everybody in your area what you do, how you do it, and what you're looking for, right? So that's how we found it, right? Now, how do we how do we fund it, right? Now, because everybody's asking me, Chris, how are you getting funded for how are you getting funded for a mobile home park? Because it's so tough to get, you know, it's, it's hard to get financing for a mobile home park. It really is. I mean. Honestly, if you don't have access to private money, I don't, see, I don't do a whole lot of private money. I use local community banks, and that's the first thing I would tell you is get your credit right um, because the smaller community banks in your area will fund these deals. Now, the first one may be tough. You may have to put 20%, 30% down. I didn't have to put zero money down in this deal. I'm zero money into this deal. But the reason I'm able to do that is because I have a track record with the bank, right, of knowing how to find deals heavily discounted with tons of equity so there's no risk to the banks after you do one the first one I, you know I bought I had to you know I had to put some money down but once you show them what you can do and how, how much equity you can capture how you can rehab it and make the cash flow double or triple then you build a track record and they trust you so when you go back to the bank say hey I have this this other mobile home park I want to buy it appraised for you know this park by the way only it only appraised for 325 but I bought it for 210 the cash flow right now is six thousand, but we're gonna take it from six. It's got three lots that are that are need to be rehabbed and three empty lots like right here that we're gonna haul in three trailers. We already bought the three trailers, so I'm gonna take the income from five to about thirteen to fifteen grand once I'm finished with it. And I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna do that here in a second. Um, but the key is, guys, it, you know, and if let's just say you don't have good credit, then just find some local investors, right? Just find somebody that's got some money. Find some, Shane says, flipping mobile home gang. Yeah, what's up, Orlando? What's up, Shane? So, find somebody that's got money, guys. So, you know, if, if you, I, I'm lucky enough I have capital, you know, I have access to credit. You know, I don't use a whole lot of private money. I know a lot of you guys, like uh, Nick was on here early, he uses a lot of private money. Reach out to those private money lenders. And if you, and if you don't get approved with the uh, private money lenders, 
Go find that rich uncle, that cousin that's got a lot of money. Show them the deal that you're bringing. Like, say, look, dude, I'm buying deals at 50 cents on the dollar, 40 cents on the dollar, 60 cents on the dollar. You're probably getting two and a half percent if you're lucky at the bank. Let me play with your money. Let me buy this mobile home park for me cash. Give me the 210. I'll give you 10% of the money. You'll be the first mortgage lien holder. I'll give you 10% of your money. I'm going to rehab it. Then I'm going to you know, bring it back to the bank and, and refi it with a regular conventional loan. And I'll give you all your money back. Plus, I'll give you 10% of whatever the, the refi cost is, right? The refi profit. So if you know, refi and you pull out 100, 100 grand, you give them an extra 10 grand on top of the 10% that you were giving them. What's up, Karen? What's up, Ronnie? What's up, Aubrey? So that's a way that, that's how you, I mean, so that's, that's another way that you can fund it with private money. Dude, does anybody, anybody that's got any brains with money who's a private money lender would, would invest in this deal all day long? Because it's no risk. If you buy it, if it appraised for 210, it, I'm sorry, it appraised for 325 and we bought it for 210 and there's already five, six grand in income and, and there's potential uncaptured appreciated rents everywhere, meaning the lot rent, this is how I evaluate this deal, right? The lot rent in here is 175 to 150. The average lot rent everywhere in this area is 250, right? It's 250. So I already know that just right there I can up the lot rent. There's only there's all about there's about seven or eight of them in here paying lot rent, but they all they pretty much all know I'm either going up on them, and if they can't go up, their trailer's got to go. And guess what? Most of their trailers they can't afford to move their trailer. So one of two things are going to happen: either they pay the lot rent, or I'm just going to buy their trailer and they're going to have to move. Most of them, a lot of them already told me they're selling their trailers to me for like five, six grand, and I'm gonna turn around and rent rent it out for seven, seven hundred bucks, seven fifty. You don't want to just own the lot rent. You no, I don't want it. I don't want it. Listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. There's, there's I think there's seven or eight people or nine people in here that are paying lot rent. That's all about to get done. Um, sorry, people that maybe watch this live that are living in here. I'm gonna let you stay for a little while, but we, we, we ain't gonna just kick you out. But my, my intention is to own slowly. slowly own all these trailers because. I can get lot rent for what, 200 bucks, but then I can have a nice vinyl sided trailer like the one you see right there. That trailer will rent for 850 all day long. So I'd, I'd rather get 850, and the maintenance on these things are nothing. They're nothing, like hardly anything. Um, are you doing septic for each one or one large treatment system? One large one, treatment there's one large treatment there's system. There's, there's one large treatment system I'll show you over there. Um, what state is this park? It's in Louisiana, Shane. So, um, I forgot what I was talking about. What else I was talking about, Mama? The rehab. Yeah, it's a rehab. So, I want to own all these trailers, right? Let's take a walk and check him out real quick. Like, you know, he pays a lot of rent. That's a nice vinyl sided trailer. I'm, he's only paying, I think, $175. i am probably going to up him to $250. i am buying this trailer from this guy. He owned, This is an investor that owns five or six trailers in here. We already talked. He's selling me this one those two or three more down here and I think he owns these two right here too so I'm gonna buy those I think we probably around 40 50 grand then I'm gonna pay cash for that and then once all that that's gonna increase the income to possibly probably around 13 to 15 grand like this one right here we're gonna rehab I mean I know it looks like crap but honestly guys these trailers are so easy to fix like if you you gotta think when you remodel a house right it costs a lot of money like I'm it may cost you ten fifteen twenty thousand dollars to get a house rent ready to get these trailers rent ready i'll literally it might only cost me a couple grand two grand like if the ac goes up like you see this ac right here how old it is we ain't gonna go back with central air you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put window units i can get a wind an ac and heat window unit for 450 bucks right so why would i go back with central air and spend six seven grand on central air right um this one right here i'm gonna go i'm gonna take you inside of that one i'm I believe that one's empty. We're going to rehab that one. This is one of the ones we're going to be buying also that an investor owns. He's just paying me a lot rent. That's one of the three. Yeah, he owns this one, this one, this one. And I believe a couple more. Let's go check out. Actually, this one over here, I think, is one that's rough. Let's go see how that, that one looks. We've got to rehab that one. But I'm going to just show you how cheap it is to rehab a trailer. Like, it's just a box, right? It's just a big box that's super cheap. That's right, Jonah. Skills get the deal, son. What's the approximate all-in per trailer? So when I haul in, like I'm gonna haul in another trailer right here on the side of this one. I paid, and that's another thing, right? So the trailers that I'm finding, I'm using my wholesaling business to find the trailers. I'm literally, I got one trailer I paid a thousand bucks for, a thousand bucks. I got another trailer that I paid 4,500 for. It doesn't hardly need any work. 
they pulled out all the carpets and stuff. But it, it, I mean, you straight, you just, you get all this slime and shit. All you do is, knock, knock. All you do is just pressure wash it. Now this one's, I think this is the worst one. So one of the kids tried to start a fire inside of the trailer. I think that was the, 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 uh, how they say that? The, uh, the, the, the what that broke the camel's back? I forgot what's the saying, right? But a little bit, a little kid that lived in here started a house fire in here. And then, so you got smoke and all that, but we're gonna clean all that out. I mean, it ain't nothing. Like these floors right here, that's nothing to change out. It's dirt cheap. You go in here and you clean it out really, really good. You wipe everything down. We're gonna lay down some vinyl planks. That way you're done with that. Don't go back with any carpet, any of that crap. That sh it's shit holds, all kind of nasty stuff. But I mean, it looks it looks nasty right now, guys. But I mean, once you once you clean it out, it's nothing. It's really nothing to get these things rented. It's nothing. I mean, and I know some of you guys. Oh man, how would you live in that, guys? I mean, you, you most of these people most people live like this. I mean, and you you make it nice enough for them, and it's affordable renting. It's affordable housing. You know. It's a, it's affordable housing, and it's, I mean, you, 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 where else are you gonna go and get something for six hundred bucks a month? It's, it's tough right now, right? So, let's check this out right here. We got. So basically, I'm gonna spend it. Literally, it'll probably cost me two grand. I'm gonna buy some floors. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean really, really good. I'm gonna get all that smoke off the ceilings. Clean it up really, really good. Pressure wash the outside. Put two window units. Honestly, I'll probably be into. I'll probably be close to three grand in this one after I buy because it, it needs two. I think it needs two units. But you got, you know, it's it's kind of dark in here, but electricity's all. But it's just a matter of floors and paint, right? Just floors. Just put some floors and paint, and you get this baby rocking and rolling again. And if not, guess what? If if my guys come in here and say, "Hey, Chris, we'd rather just haul it out," I can haul this thing out and not even fix it. Maybe like, well, it needs too much work. It ain't nothing to haul this thing out, right? I can get, <laughs> Tim says, where do I sign up? <laughs> I, can, uh, I can haul this thing out for 500 bucks. Let me switch this over. I can haul this thing out for 500 bucks. I can run a Facebook ad in my area that says, you know, we're buying used mobile homes. I will get an influx of people trying to sell me their trailers for nothing, nothing like 90s model trailers, early 2000s, they're trying to buy new trailers and no, nobody will buy their trailer because people can't get finance for all the trailers. So what do I do? I come in there and I offer super low ball cash. Like I bought a, I bought one trailer for a thousand bucks. It's a, I think it's a 99 model. And I got another trailer that's a 03 model. It doesn't need anything but just new carpets. I paid 4,500 bucks for it. So I'll haul that trailer out if I don't want to rehab it for 500 bucks buy another trailer for 4,500 bucks. It cost me another two grand to haul it over here. So that's what I'm into. It's for six, I'm in, I'm in, into it for 65. Then it cost me about another thousand dollars to set it up. So I'm into it, maybe 1500. So I'm all in at what, 8,500 bucks. And then that trailer will rent for 750, 800 bucks. Dude, how are you gonna beat that? You can't beat that return. You can't, there's nothing that beats that return, nothing. So that's, that's how you rehab these things, right? And you can find, you, you don't even have, the thing about this is you don't have to find like qualified contractors to do the kind of work that you need to get done on trailers. It's not like it's a nice single family home and you gotta make it all nice. You literally, all you gotta do literally is just clean it out, pay, do some paint floors. So you, what you can do is you can get, you can get some side, you know, like you got people that'll do this for 15, $20 an hour. You pay a contractor to, to, fit, to rehab single family homes. You don't need to pay a contractor to do a trailer, right? So you can literally get somebody for $15 an hour is what I'm saying. We have two people on staff. We have one that I pay $16 an hour and one that I pay $13 an hour. And they do everything, right? They, I don't need a, a, a qualified contractor to rehab all these trailers. So anyway, um, post your questions. I know we got a lot of questions. So that's, that's how you rehab it. Now, once we go ahead, let me, let me switch over. Once we finish, once we finish this park, like that one looks rough, but it's really not that bad. And the inside, I, wa I, I looked at the inside, you just need to paint it, right? But once we finish rehabbing it, I'm gonna take the income from six grand to about 13 to 15 grand. Then I'm gonna go back to the bank and I'm gonna say, hey, Mr. Banker, 
You remember that deal that you financed for me that I paid two ten for? Well, and it was only getting five grand in rent. Now it's getting fourteen thousand or thirteen thousand in rent. I want to go ahead and put a line of credit on it. And what the bank will do is they'll go ahead and reappraise it. Now they'll do what's called an income approach. And a commercial property is valued off of the income. So if you imagine it only appraised for three twenty five because it only had five thousand worth of income, but imagine what it appraised for when it when it gets thirteen to fourteen thousand dollars worth of income. It's gonna probably it's gonna probably appraise for six, seven hundred thousand. So then the bank will give me what, eighty percent of appraised value, and I'm gonna open up a line of credit and have access to, you know, three, four hundred thousand, depending on what it appraised for. That's the, the treatment plant that you gotta check on. We checked on that all before we um, we bought it to make sure that everything was working right. It's all it's newer, so we're good on that. Let's see what some of the questions you guys have. Um, you ever sell them in notes? No, I know some people that you could, there's so many options too with these trailers, you can sell the trailers and then, you know, sell the trailers on a lease option or owner finance. And then, you know, you can get like a thousand, two thousand down and sell them for, you know, $400 a month for the next five years and get all your money back and then just rent the dirt to them, right? Let's see, do you have a year model you recommend in going below, like staying above 90s? Yeah, I would stay above the 90s. Um, like this one right here, we gotta rehab this one. How y'all doing? You all right? You moving into this one? Oh, yeah. You, 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 you about to move into it? Okay, awesome, I just bought the place, so I'm, I'm your, uh, your landlord. The nice meeting you. Anyway, um, you know, we're gonna, I forgot my train of thought, anyway. So let's still check it out over here. So you got these two spots right here. This is why I bought this place because there's so much, there was so much uncaptured potential on rent, right? So you got these two empty spots that I'm gonna haul in two more trailers. You see these right here? I got this spot. You got that pole right here. Let's check out that pole. You got a meter pole right here. And you have another cement slab right here where we're gonna go and haul another one right here. Now, yeah, that's what I was saying. So now, after I go and, so after I go and I take it back to the bank, right? Like I did my, the other two parks I bought, I rehabbed them, took them back to the bank. I don't refi, right? Well, I, I do a, a refi, but I don't pull all the cash out. What I do is I do a line of credit. Let me tell you why a line of credit is better. When you do a line of credit, you have con constant access to the money, right? You, uh, cause once you pull out, once you pull out and do a refi, you take you taking all the money out. You can't you you don't have access to the money anymore. But with a with a line of credit, I can pull the money out and put the money back in, right? And then what I can do is keep using it anytime I want to do more deals. But it the, the point is it's the best of both worlds. So I can take all my cash and leave it in that line of credit and just keep pulling in and out, in and out, whatever I want. What's up, mama? My truck was unlocked. What you worried about? Why well, you think we in the trailer park? They gonna steal no, my truck? I mean, are down okay, all right. Bye, my baby. Love you. All right. We'll walk back to my truck. But anyway, let me answer some of these questions. Let's see. Yeah, Ronnie, I like to stay in the 2000 uh, models. Or, or I, honestly, I mean, I like to stay at the vinyl sided trailers is where I like to stay. A lot of these are 10 trailers, which means they're 80s and 90s. But if you can get the vinyl sided ones, that's 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 where the I guess the technology of these trailers that were they made them a little bit nicer when when they started putting vinyl siding on the side of them how does one get started finding these deals and bringing investors together so finding the deals you could do a, a number of different things you can start cold calling every park owner in your town you can just go through the you know google it uh, trailer parks in your town start cold calling right send direct mail posting all over Facebook like how we got this deal Right, there's, there's so many ways to find deals. Um, let's see. I understand wholesaling houses. Are trailers just as easy to find? Do trailers, or that's the thing I love about trailer parks is because I have an un, I have a, an unlimited supply of inventory. There's so many used trailers out there that I can buy and replace these other trailers with, and for cheap, for dirt cheap, it, it's ridiculous. I can I can find a trailer for a thousand, two thousand, forty five hundred, depending on the condition. And there's, there's tons of them out there because there's a lot of people that have 10-year-old trailers, 20-year-old trailers, 
and they want to renew they want to get a newer trailer but nobody will buy them because they can't get finance for them so all you guys do is run an ad right we buy used mobile homes and facebook and facebook and i guarantee you or go to facebook uh, marketplace look at all the people selling trailers right there you can pick up some trailers for, dirt, for nothing let's see what is the property tax on that place it ain't much at all man i think it was see this is why there's a nationwide moratorium brad on, on mobile home parks because the city the city can't get property much property taxes on these trailers because they're not worth a whole lot i think the property taxes on this whole park might be like two grand or a thousand or, i have to look it up it ain't much i remember i remember when jan looked it up my assistant she said it, it was it's nothing because it, they value it off of the trailers and the trailers aren't worth much so that that's another good aspect of it the property taxes are super low and the insurance is super low like to insure these things is, is peanuts but they rent just as good or just as much as a house but a house costs way more money to maintain way more money to rehab once they destroy it when they move out when they move out of these it, it might cost me a thousand bucks five hundred bucks to clean it up when they when they trash my house it, sometimes it costs me five ten Shit, the other day it cost me twenty-five thousand dollars to. Once one of my tenants moved out, they totally destroyed a house, a nice house. So I decided, hey, I'm getting rid of all of my single-family homes, and we're just doing mobile homes. Cause it's just it's too easy. It, I say it's easy. nothing's easy, guys, but it's the amount of work you got to put into single-family homes versus trailers is just it's not even close. Like it's it's like one end of the spectrum to the other. I mean, it, it'll cost me a thousand bucks to renovate a, a trailer like this if they if they destroy it, right? What's up, Rob? What's up, Steve? Frederick, I'm fully expecting you to stumble upon a body any minute. <laughs> That's funny, Frederick. That's funny, dude. Tim, so what's the maintenance on this place? Do you have to cut the grass? No, they cut their own grass. That's the beautiful thing, too. I don't have to cut the grass. That's all in the, in the, um, in the lease. Let's see. How do you find funds to fund your investments? So literally, if you go back and uh, watch the live from the beginning, I talked about this, how to find private money. There's people everywhere that, that, that have money. Or there's even companies out there that, that you can reach out to that have access to private money. And what I suggest to you guys is get your credit right, guys. Get your, stop fooling around and being stupid and not, in the, you know, get your credit right. Um, we have great credit. And if you don't have great credit, just just go ahead and find that rich uncle that you can give 10% on, you know, his money. He may want 11 or 12 or 9, who knows. He it's it's worth it, you know. Once you buy it, he buys the whole thing for you. You stabilize it and then go back to the bank and refi. He'll he'll, you know, he'll he'll love you after that. He'll he'll be asking you where's the next deal. So, um, can you post some hope Can you post some hopefully sites? What's up? What's up, Robert? What's up, Mark? Sounds like a really good entry level investment strategy. Yeah, I mean this is not a this is not a hard deal to do at all. But the the amount of cash flow you can get once it stabilizes is, is is bar none better than anything I've seen. Anything. I mean apartments, single family homes, short term vacation. Because it's so cheap. It's so cheap to maintain and it, it's um it's so cheap to renovate, right? The rehab cost on this thing is nothing. So what's up, Mark? Um, what's up Jason anyway guys if you're interested in learning this you know I can help you I don't have a you know typical I don't really have a mobile home park investing course but if you learn how to wholesale you'll get these deals right that's the whole that's the whole point like if you learn how to wholesale it gives you access to the best deals right you, you set up a, all a wholesaling business is, is what it's a professional marketing business so Get, get a wholesaling business set up. Go to chrisroot.com. Then you'll learn how to find these deals. Once you find the deals, finding the money is not that hard. It's finding the deals that's the hardest part. What is the criteria that the bank won't finance? It won't finance? Um, if it's a complete shithole, I mean, if it's really, really bad, and I bought worse than this before, if it's really, really, really bad, uh, they, may not, they may not fund it, right? Um, it depends on the location, the condition of the trailer. I mean, these trailers are not that bad. I mean, you got some in here that are rough, but I'm going to slowly haul them out. What's up, Anthony? What's up, Rick? Anyway, let's see if we have any other questions. Love trailer cash. Hey, 100%. One of my students said, I think Tim Silk's on, he tells me, he said, turn, 
it said turn in trailer park i don't want to say it be ugly it said turn in trailer park trash in the trailer park cash i probably shouldn't say that's kind of ugly but uh anyway um let's see have you thought about starting your own park larry that no i i don't want to do that larry. there's a nationwide moratorium on setting up these parks you, you can't even hardly the, na the nationwide moratorium there's a reason why that nobody's wanting to, to build these they can't make any money the, go the local municipalities and governments can't make any money because the trailers aren't worth anything. So the property taxes is not, they can't get enough in property taxes to substantiate letting more and more parks be built. But from an investment st standpoint, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, you make tons of cash. Um, you bought this with lots of equity and it already increased your net worth 100K plus. How much will it increase your net worth after you bump the rents up and go back to the bank? I think once it's done and stabilized, and I'll haul in all those, you know, and I, and I take over all the trailers. It's going to be in this. It's going to be in the 700 range. I would say it's probably anywhere from 650 to 750, Tim. That's what it's going to be worth when I'm done with it. But I'll probably have to put. I'll probably put a 100 grand into it. Uh, but I paid 210 for it. So what I'm going to be into it for 310, and it appraised for say 700. I mean, I just captured what almost 400 grand in equity, and then I'm going to pull a line of credit on 80% of, or actually the bank only gives me 70 or 70, 75% on trailers. It, they'll give me 80 on, on single family homes and apartments, but they give me 75 on trailer, trailer parks. So I'll pull a line, what, what, what's 75% of 700,000? So that's what I'll have access to minus what I owe in the place, which will be 210. So what is that? That's like, I'll have access to roughly 300,000, 350,000 tax free that I can pull out. Does that make sense, Tim? I have seven mobile homes for rent. I'm looking to buy a mobile home park. Awesome, dude. Go back and, and uh, watch watch how, what I talked about, how to find what's up, Leo. This is the route I want to go working on credit now. Awesome, AJ. Let me know if I can help. What's up, Cody? What's up, Eddie? Let's see. Share and invite, guys. If you're just coming on, share and invite. Can you depreciate the cost of the trailer against the NOI? I'm pretty sure you can, Tim. Um, but this, I mean, the appreciation of the trailers is not that. It's not that's that's kind of the downside. You not you can't depreciate this like you can a single family home or an apartment. Um, how many lines of credit can you have? Well, you can have as many as you want if you, if it's secured by an asset like this. I mean, we have access. We have like five. One, two, three. We have five lines of credit, and um, but they're all secured by assets. I mean, you, I mean, essentially, you can have. A hundred lines of credit. If you've got, if you got equity in a property, an asset like this that stabilizes, that's spitting out cash flow, you can you can essentially have as many as you want. It's no risk to the bank, right? What's up, O'Neill? What's up, Miss D? Love you, Miss D. Thanks for joining and watching. Shane, then then you go and buy another park after refinancing for the 75 percent percent line of credit. That's right. And what you do is you take that money and you use the money to go find another park. You know, so it, and it and it's tax free. What's up, Blake? What's up, Hameen? What's up, Brett? Cody, if you have a line of credit against the park and the banks tighten up, do you still have access to liquidity? Yes, as long as as long as your financials are intact and your credit is still good, you can have access to it. Um, as long as the bank doesn't seize up, I don't use big banks like Chase or J.P. Morgan or. Uh, Wells Fargo, I use small community banks, right? You want to use small community banks in your market who you get to know and they know, like, and trust you. They understand what you're trying to do and you can build a relationship with them, right? And then once you build a relationship with them, they trust you. So, then you can buy whatever you want. So, congratulations, brother. Just now getting into wholesaling, trying to dominate my market and be where you are as soon as humanly possible. You're an inspiration, man. Hey, I appreciate that, Brett. Thanks for the kind words. So anyway, guys, that's how you do it. I mean, if you have any other questions, post them. I'll go back. But I mean, that's how you find it. You know, we, this was just an organic post on Facebook that Patty posted. Hey, looking for mobile home parks. Simple as that. Somebody tags her and said, hey, I think this girl's dad's trying to sell a park. Simple as that. I mean, it. it you got to brand yourself in your market as the guy that does your thing, right? So in my market, everybody knows I buy houses. Everybody knows that I buy mobile home parks. And, and I want everybody to know that. And I'm constantly saying that like as soon as we as soon as we finish rehabbing this probably in the next couple weeks i'm gonna start I'm gonna, I'm gonna start promoting again looking for another one to start my due diligence on right and it's just a matter of telling everybody what you do and how you do it um 
you think I could do this in my early 20s, I think I'd have to use private lenders as my credit source is pretty much non-existent working on that though. Yeah, I mean, dude, age, Shane, age is just a, a number, dude. I mean, if you got a deal, if you got a deal, I mean, you can bring that deal to some investors and they'll fund it. You just got to find those investors. Get a part of, get, get in the know of who's got money, right, in your town. Find out who's the big players if they got money. Uh, but as far as you getting a loan for it from the bank right away at 20 years old, I don't, I don't, if you don't have a history of doing these deals or if you don't have any credit, you don't, your W-2s don't look good. And for you guys, let me tell you something. For you guys that are that are hiding cash and not depositing money to try to not pay Uncle Sam, shame on you. Shame on you. you you're you screwing yourself. You're screwing yourself because I got buddies that, that own lawn services and, you know, uh, landscaping business. And it's an all-cash business. And these dudes are these dudes are making two and 300000 a year. And what are they doing? They're claiming on their taxes that they're making thirty grand a year. Right, and then they can't get they can't get even, they can't get finance for their house. Right, they make three hundred thousand dollars a year, but they can only buy a hundred fifty thousand dollar house, but they can afford a half a million dollar house. Do not cheat Uncle Sam, guys. Pay pay your bills. Pay pay Uncle Sam. You know, you, I mean, how you think the government gives you all these nice services for one and two? You screwing yourself because if you do it right, there's a way not to pay that much in taxes through real estate. So pay Uncle Sam. Don't hide your cash. You know, show how much money you make so that you can show that you make money when you bring your financials to the bank and they'll try like this guy's making some money you know let's just say you're a young cat you're 25 years old you're washing cars or whatever you did I, when I was a young cat I was changing oil washing cars turning wrenches and I made some good money you know I made some good money I never hide the dime guys I never I never put cash underneath the bed I deposited everything I paid my taxes but the bank trusted me and they liked me and they, they said man this guy's making money let's go ahead and give him a loan What's up, Ryan? What's up, Craig? What's up, Ken? My man. Um, so, I mean, it's just uh, it's just a matter of you, you know, being honest and, and with yourself and, and deposit your money and, and get work on your credit, work on you know showing showing that you're making money on your W two, and then bring that to the bank and get a relationship going with these smaller community banks. Let's see. Good seeing you, Mike. That's right, Ken. Good seeing you, my brother. But anyway, guys, that's kind of my two cents on it. That's why I like, you know, that's why I like the mobile home play. Um, there's so many different options. And, and the thing is, I can break these up, right? Let's just say, let's just say I was like, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't want to mess with this trailer anymore. You know, let's say one of them's too messed up, right? Like this one right here. That one looks pretty old. Oh, no, the one on the side or actually the one right there, the white one. That one we're gonna rehab. Let's just say I didn't want to rehab it. Um, I could probably get somebody. I could probably sell it to somebody on lease option for 500 bucks, and he'll go in there and rehab it himself. Put it on Craigslist, right? Put it on, um, you know, uh, Facebook Marketplace, and he'll come in there and renovate it, and then pay me. You know, get, say, hey, give me a thousand bucks or 500 bucks for it, and then when you finish. Uh, renovating it you can pay me lot rent for 250 there's so many options right or I can haul it out for 500 bucks I got guys that'll haul that out for 500 bucks and I'll haul a new one in there's so many different options that's why I like it Michael hey it's uh it was nice seeing you at growth on you too Michael nice seeing you what's up Gene Joshua Ryan Tim what are the biggest drawbacks to owning trailer parks um if you're not careful, Tim, and you buy in a really bad area, I mean, it could, or if, well, honestly, management. Management is what you, you gotta have, like, I don't manage my parks. I mean, for one, I ain't got the time, and two, I'm too soft. I would let everybody not pay their rent and try to give them more time. You gotta have somebody that's a hard ass, and you, you need to have somebody, you gotta have in-house property managers. Like, we have an in-house property manager. She, she handles all this. Her, her husband, and another worker, they do all, there's three of them. They, Jan, you know, collects the rent, and the other two do all the maintenance. But they have to be hard and rough. Like, hey, you don't pay, you don't stay. You got to the fifth, you know, if you don't pay, then we'll give you maybe another 10, 15 days and you gotta pay, you know, you're gonna have to pay me late fees. And if you don't pay, they put the eviction on there. Because if you let one get away with it or two, what happens is the, it sets the president for the park owners and the rest of them in there think that, oh, he didn't have to pay or she didn't get charged late fees or she didn't get kicked out. And then they all start paying late. But as soon as you start evicting one or two or three of them, and they see him getting all that shit putting out at the road. What happens? They all like, oh shit! I can't, I can't get away with that. I, I need to pay, right? So um, let me see how much battery life I got right here, guys. Got 13%. Um, but that's kind of the story, right? You, 
strict. You got to run these things like a boot, like a freaking boot camp, like a military. You don't pay, you don't stay. Like we're gonna come in here, like for instance, you can tell these things are stressed. Look at the trash everywhere. You got, you got freaking trash. Look at the trash can. You know, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna, we're gonna send them all the letters. If we see trash in their yard, we're gonna find them. And if they keep doing it, we're gonna evict them. But I'm gonna have to come in here. We're gonna have to pick up all this shit. They're not throwing their trash in the in the trash can. We're gonna clean up the park, and we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it nice. That way, if it's nice and there's no trash everywhere, you're gonna attract a higher end tenant, right? You're gonna attract somebody that wants to live in here that's maybe got a nice family who's just maybe the you know, lower middle working class and they want, you know, they, they want a safe place to live. And if you don't make it look safe and, and the grass cut, no trash, and, and make sure that they, the dogs are locked up, you can't just let anybody in your parks, guys. You know, that's because you get one bad apple and they'll, Basically, they'll, you know, they'll start, they'll just start leaving in windrows. So protect it and make sure you, you do some qualifications on them. Like, you know, make, make sure, verify income for one. Make sure they got a job. Don't take it on, oh, well, I get paid cash. No, like, show me where you work. Give me, give me some references. Um, where were you rented last time? Why did you leave? How many times you've been evicted? Um, how many rentals do you have? Right now, we're close to 100 right now, Ken. So we're, we're looking to scale. We're looking to buy at least a couple a couple hundred a year so anyway um, but yeah do a background check before you let these guys in here you know do about and if you're just coming on guys come go back and watch it later like it share it invite people and just go back and watch it and I kind of went over you know how to find it how to fund it um, and how to rehab it right we went over all three of those points but I love mobile home parks guys um, you know I think I think they're a great investment now they're not fair they're not good in, in certain parts oh I say not good they're not prevalent all over the country like the deep south i'm in the deep south i'm in louisiana south central louisiana they're everywhere so it's a they're more prevalent than than say apartment complexes although there's still a good bit of apartment complexes but you've got to uh see what's um you know what's around in your area my man chris we love the diversity and what you're doing brother awesome bryce appreciate that man what's up robert how much passive cash flow do those 100 units create that does about I think we're, we're close to 25 grand, 25 grand in income. So the magic number, guys, you wanna, you wanna, get, your, you wanna get your passive income at 100 grand. I think that's a sweet spot. If you can make 100 grand passively a month, dude, you know, fuck the you know, Social Security and you know, Medicaid and Medicare, you can live off of that, right? And if you start early, and you, dude, if, if I was you guys, if I was like Tim Silk, who was one of my students, he's 19, 20 years old, if I'd have known about this shit in my early 20s, guys, I'd be, I'd be set. I'm, I'll be 38 in two weeks. I got into the game when I was like, I didn't start buying, well, I got into real estate when I was 25, flipping a few deals, but I didn't start buying rentals till I was uh, 30. Yeah, 30. Yeah, about eight years ago. So start early. Start real early. And, and just, it, and I'm not saying, like, even if you want to start off a single family home, start off with a single family home as long as you're buying it wholesale, at, at wholesale discounted prices. That's why it's in, critically important you start a wholesaling business first if I if I would have started a wholesaling business first I'd have known how to go direct to seller how to find heavily discounted off-market properties buying it 30 40 50 60 70 cents on the dollar not off of MLS at 90 or 85 cents on the dollar that's not a deal like you gotta buy super discounted so 1.2 million a year I think that's that that's doable that's right Tim that's definitely doable the earlier you start the better off you are but anyway guys point is Start a wholesaling business. Number one, if you have the wholesaling business, I talked about this in the book I wrote, The Source of the Deal. You got to become the source of the deal first and learn how to go direct to seller. That's where the deals are at. The deals are not with realtors, although you can find deals with realtors because I got one of my parks from a realtor. I don't want to say that because I got one, I got, I got my first mobile home park from a realtor. That was a smoking hot deal too. But for the most part, that was a, you know, that was a unicorn, right? That was a, a diamond in the rough. But that's what you're looking for. This is a unicorn deal, guys. To pay for get 24 unit park for 210, 210, and once I finish it, it's gonna probably be worth 700,000, 650. This is a unicorn deal, and I won't buy nothing but unicorn deals. I all I only want unicorn deals. Like I'm not a, I'm not a you know unsophisticated investor like I used to be, say seven eight years ago before I had a wholesaling business set up. Now I'm buying shit so cheap, I can't lose. I lost look, I lost money on four deals this year. I lost twenty five thousand on one deal, thirty five hundred on another deal, and twenty five hundred and maybe another five grand. Right? It was all deals I bought back six to seven years ago before I had a professional wholesaling business set up. 
now, and because I was buying why I was buying at 85 cents on the dollar, 80 cents on the dollar. Market was hot, thinking that it would always stay hot. You know, I'm in a down, depressed market over here. So that's when you want to buy. That's why I'm buying up everything right now. But it's not always going to be hot, and it's not always going to be down. Everything is cyclic. You know, cyclical. It goes up and down. So. The point is, if you're if you're a newbie investor just getting on and you're on this live and you're like, man, I want to get into real estate. I like what Chris is doing. Guys, start a wholesaling business. You know, I got one. I just saw one of my students, uh, Ben Ben Mearson from Canada, right? He's one of my top students from what's up, Ben? Ben's from from Windsor. Ben was flipping houses and he didn't have a professional wholesaling business set up in his business. As soon as he set up a professional wholesaling in his business, like his business changed because he was able to find more deals. It's all about finding more deals. If you if you have access to more deals, to, to deal flow, that's the biggest problem you have as a real estate investor is finding deals. So if you don't have that that marketing business, that's all a wholesaling business is is a professional marketing business set up to fund deals, to find your deals, then you're just by chance gonna find deals. You're gonna have to find your deals with realtors. Or, you know, it's just it's tough, guys. It, it really is tough. Um, Brian, I need some help. I want to get into real estate, but my job is wasting my time. Then, Brian, do it on the side, man. You know, hook up with me. I've got a lot of students have full-time jobs, and they're they're doing this business and making money. Let me see how much juice I got left on my battery. I got, I'm at eight percent. I'm good. Um, I'm 22, and I just started wholesaling this year with my business partner, who happens to be a real estate agent. That's that's great. Honestly, the, I'm partnering up with a lot of people, you know, in in the South, and. Uh, I'm partnering up with people. I really like when they're real estate agents because they they know the market. So they take a lot of the, a lot of the, the know-how out of it or the the learning curve out of it because they know the market. They know comps. They know how to pull comps. They know how to you know evaluate properties. And for the most part, they know the neighborhoods, the good and bad. So, um, awesome. What's up, Hope? What's up, Jason? I appreciate that, uh, Virgello. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Brian, if I could talk to you when you get off the live, I would appreciate it. I'll send you a message if that's cool. Cool, Brian. Yeah, send me an inbox on Facebook Messenger. But anyway, guys, look, if you're interested in my program, go to chrisrude.com, book a call with me, inbox me here on Facebook. I'd love to help you. And it's not even just, look, if your thing is single family, I'm not knocking single family homes or apartments because I do own. I've owned some small apartments. As a matter of fact, I'm selling my 12 unit right now because I bought, I bought it. Uh, I bought it right. I bought it cheap, but I bought it. It was an F class. It turned out pro probably more like an F minus class. We had a shooting right after I bought it, and it scared my property manager. So um, we're selling that. But um, don't buy anything lower than a C minus to D plus. You know, this is this is gonna probably this is probably about a C plus area. This is middle class, working class area. I mean, it's kind of nasty and dirty right now because we, you know, it's distressed. But we're going to clean it all up, cut the grass, and get all the trash up. But stick to C class. Um, no, you know, B class is even better, but you're going to pay a premium for that. Um, but no, no more than a D plus, right? And when, when I say D plus or C, all that, that's how we value, you know, that's how we value real estate, right? Uh, or it's how we categorize real estate. What's up, Brandon? Uh, Tim. Is it scalable to buy trailer parks in bulk? Yeah, if you got the, it's all management, Tim. Listen, if you got, I don't care how much money you have, how many deals you got, if you don't have the right management, it will eat your lunch. I promise you, it will eat your lunch. So you gotta have all those those pieces in. You gotta have the deal, you gotta have access to money, and you gotta have management. If you got those three pieces in, you can scale this. And I'm scaling it, because I got all three of those pieces in. I got access to money. I know how to find deals because why? Because I have a wholesaling business. And three, I have a management team. Now, we're going to start scaling in other states here soon once I get enough in this area. And in Louisiana, we're looking for deals in Baton Rouge, New Orleans. Um, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we start, l learn your local market first. Don't try to start doing all kind of virtual shit right away. Conquer and learn your backyard first. So, uh, what's up, Loran? Let's see. What's up, Greg? Almost done with the course. Coming in strong. You're the man. Awesome, Raphael. Awesome. What's up, Pete? Anyway, guys, I think we'll call it a day. We've been on here for a while. If you're just on here, like it, share it. If and listen, listen, guys, if you share it, what I'll do is I'll send you a free copy of my ebook, The Source of the Deal, to get how to get started in wholesaling, how to dominate your market. Share the video and um, hope you kill it and uh, just remember chrisrude.com 
skill, skill up at chrisrude.com and understand that, you know, you can do this. You, you, you're going to need a mentor. Can you do it without a mentor? Yes, but you'll probably screw up like I did and start buying all kind of shit at prices you shouldn't be buying at and then losing money down the road like I did. So understand that you're buying a mentor's time and you're buying his experience and you're buying his perspective, right? That's all I have for you is perspective. So anyway, what will you do when you reach 100K passive income per month? Tim, I'm gonna probably go for more, my brother. I don't think I'll ever stop, um, but I think that's that's my goal. That's that's my bottom. That's where I wanna be least. You know, that, that's the minimum place I wanna be is 100 grand a month passively. From there, you know, I think from there I'm, I'm set, but I, I, I like to reach whatever you know, potential I can at that point, but um, that's the bare minimum of where, where I want to hit. So, mimic the ones who are already there. That's right, Pete, 100%. What's up, Ted? Anyway, guys, chrisrude.com. Peace.